Hey, I'm back again to tell you a couple of other little tidbits. This is a source of many. They all say basically the same thing. But nobody can say you believe in MSNBC or MSN. You can get it from Reuters, you can get it from wherever, Al Jazeera, whatever. No, the UN and the thief, Kofi Annan, and they have provo proposed inviting of all nations Iran to a multinational meeting to discuss a political transition in Syria. But they're leaving it up to the U.S. and Russia to decide whether Iran can participate. Kofi Annan, the thief, wants an understanding between Washington and Moscow on Iran, other potential guests, and the agenda. Before he issues the formal invitations to the meeting of an action group on Syria, and he wants to convene in Geneva on Saturday. And this uh, information was given by an official who spoke on a condition of anonymity due to the sensitive nature of the diplomacy. Don't you love them? anonymity people. The U.S. is adamantly opposed to Iran taking part. Well, at least that's one smart thing. While Russia supports its inclusion. Secretary of State Hillary the Liar, Rodham Clinton, has said Iran's participation would be a red line for the United States because it has been overt in its support of Syrian President Bashar Assad's brutal crackdown on the opposition. Well, we got a little problem there, eh? Why, why would you invite a nation that supports him if you're going around the world trying to rally support against him? And Kofi the liar Anon has previously said that Iran should be part of the solution to the Syrian crisis, but has been coy about whether he believes Iran's president presence is vital. Don't you love that guy? Look Kofi and on up. <clears throat> Look about the uh, oil for food, all that nice stuff and everything. Anon has now said that Iran would be part of an optimum roster for the meeting according to the officials. And the U.S. has not changed its position. Thank goodness. However, they stress that Anon also believe that a U.S.-Russia understanding is essential. Clinton and the foreign minister from Russia, Sergei Lavrov, have discussed this matter and are due to meet again on Friday in St. Petersburg, Russia. But, Anon wants some answer from the two countries by late Tuesday, which I have not heard if there has been an answer yet. It is early in the a.m. as I said on Wednesday to me right now. In addition to Iran, the officials said Anon is proposed inviting the foreign ministers of the five permanent members of the UN Security Council, Britain, China, France, Russia, and the U.S. along with Iraq, Kuwait, Qatar, Turkey, and Saudi Arabia. Anon has also suggested that UN Chief Ban Ki-moon, the Arab League Secretary General, and EU Foreign Policy Chief Catherine Ashton be invited. It is not clear on Monday what the final invitation would look like or whether the planned conference would proceed on June the 30th. Mm-hmm-hmm. And it's dated the 26th. Well, <clears throat> I don't believe Iran's going to be any help of any part of any solution. It is an interesting tidbit why this man says he wants them there. But then again, like I said, look into the background of Kofi Annan. You're going to find dirt if you look in the right spot. So. We'll see where this goes. And uh, I do believe 
that I have heard that Turkey has stated if something happens again their response will be different now this is just a little tidbit isn't this an interesting thing about the self glorification once again of the people who think they're the divinity closest to Christ of the divine right to rule let's say they're different than you because of the blood that courses through their veins and their big special DNA Big Ben is going to get a new name and by golly it's going to be called the Elizabeth Tower isn't that just fabulous let's go ahead and read the hogwash they're shoving down the people of Britain's throats one of the most famous names in the world is the Eiffel Tower and the Statue of Liberty and I've done video on Statue of Liberty to show you exactly what it really is and is not but we're talking about Big Ben here <clears throat> Big Ben is going to be renamed Elizabeth Tower to mark the Queenie's 60th year on the British throne how that nation could take that for 60 years is well how they could take it guess they don't have a choice though the announcement on Tuesday followed four days of celebrations earlier this month to mark the 86 year old Queen's Elizabeth's Diamond Jubilee we already had to watch them glorify themselves with the Jubilee we had to watch the Duke and Duchess tie the knot and glorify that. The landmark part of Britain's House of Parliament is officially called the Clock Tower, commonly known as Big Ben. Oh, here we go again, their version of Obama, Prime Minister David Cameron. Welcome the name change. Yes, just embrace it and welcome it. The renaming of the clock tower to the Elizabeth Tower is a fitting recognition of the Queen's 60 years of service. This is an exceptional tribute to an exceptional monarch. <laughs> oh, that Cameron. Reactions among the public were mixed, however. Big Ben is so old and iconic, what is the sense in changing the name? Well. All over the world, people want to understand what Elizabeth Tower is. That came from a Romanian tourist. And you got your banker here, and he says, It's not a bad idea. Ben is a strange name for a tower anyway, and the Queen deserves it. Why does the Queen deserve it? Why? <laughs> oh, they deserve so, so much, don't they? The royals deserve so much. The name change was or proposed by Conservative Party lawmaker Tobias Elwood and accepted by parliamentary authorities. The House of Commons Commission welcomed the proposal to rename the clock Tower Elizabeth Tower in recognition of Her Majesty the Queen's Diamond Jubilee and will arrange for this decision to be implemented in an approximate manner in due course. And here we go, again. The Jubilee celebrations underscored a surge in popularity for the Queen in recent years and included the biggest flotilla on the Thames for more than three centuries. That's a long time. A star-studded concert and a horse-drawn procession through the capital. Saving this for the very last, However, many Britons were opposed to the tower name change. A YouGov poll last month found almost half opposed proposal to rename the clock tower, and only 30% supported it. So, cheers to everyone there that opposed the name change. But guess what? Even though the people spoke and half of them said no, well, you still had a banker that said the Queen deserves it and you still had Mr. Cameron saying this is an exceptional tribute to an exceptional monarch 
fitting recognition of her 60 years of service. I'm sorry for everybody over there that they're screwing it up and that you're going to be plowed with more self-glorification of the Queen and her family continues to do whatever they want to push themselves out there the way they do. Last but not least, <clears throat> I want to reaffirm, first of all, this is a good one. The discussing sounds out of heaven. I done watched it. I urge everybody to come here and, and be a regular viewer. You don't have to give them any money, right? Okay? These guys make the radio show and they have to pay for the production and everything. You know, if there's nothing coming in, how do they make a living? You know? The guests that they have are knowledgeable. And yes, they do write books. And yes, they do offer, make offers. You don't have to buy them, though. You see, you don't have to. The information is free. Now, I said it before I met him. It's been years ago. I looked in his eyes, and he is not a ripoff guy. Stearman is a number one honest and true and a good man. And so was this guy before he passed away, J.R. Church. So I do get my feathers ruffled when someone tells me they only do this to make money and sell books and not to be misled. You're insulting my intelligence because I'm smart enough to not be misled. Okay? I'm very, very, very careful. I do a lot of thinking on what is what is true and what is not. Yeah, sometimes I wonder some things that maybe I don't have the answers for. But that doesn't mean I'm misled. So don't think that they just do this to make a bunch of money like TBN or something. They're based here in my state. They're less than an hour and a half away from me. And I can drive down there and shake this guy's hand again anytime that I want to. You know, the criticism that, that, that I receive sometimes about this show and these men, this man, Gary Stearman, is wrong. You've never been here and met him. You've never looked into his eyes. You've never carried on a conversation with him. So I'm trying to help you when I show you these these shows that have this important information that can help you. You know, you can throw it away after you watch it, if that's what you want to do. But I urge you to keep it and hold it and learn from it and quit denying things. And that's what I got to say about prophecy in the news. They are true and they do not lie, they're not misleading, they're not fear-mongering, they're giving you the truth. And the truth can set you free. But with that, I'm going to end it, and I'm going to urge everybody to be safe in this heat. we got a heat wave going now. It was 106 degrees inside where I work. You know, it was like 107 or 8 outside, and uh, wow. It's really tough. Um, the man may have had something, you know, wrong with him from birth inside of his heart, but about, oh, I don't know, a month or a little over a month ago, maybe. We had a guy I worked with, only 43 years old. He ran two machines at one time. Uh, he was a good worker. He worked hard. He worked fast. He put out a lot for him, uh, so he could make a good, a good income. And uh, Friday came, we all went home. Monday came, he wasn't there. The guy had a massive heart attack Sunday night. Um, you know, worked hard. You, know, you could see sweating a lot and stuff. But the point being, be careful with yourselves in this heat. And I can't stress that enough. 
you know, I showed you the video about the sun. Well, you know, sun, hot, heat, etc. So drink plenty of water. Take yourself a break. Go into the shade for a while. But don't overexert yourself to where you go beyond the point of no return. And, uh, you know, like I said, I love each and every one of you. I haven't met you personally, but that don't matter to me. You're all my friends, and I value each and every one of you. And may God bless you. Put that armor on. Battle that evil. And don't stop looking up. Because someday he's coming back. And he's going to come from above your head. And you got a lot of nice stuff up there. It's been where I'm at, you know, not only is it hot, it's really clear. I mean, there's hardly any, no clouds at all. And when nighttime comes, you know, there's a lot of beautiful stuff that you can look at up there. Now, uh, on a different thing, just before I close out, it was uh, a little over a week ago, I tried to capture some images from work and they were very strange things to, to, to me they were I have not found out what I actually saw but uh I believe it was about seven no it was about nine o'clock I believe at lunchtime and I went outside to smoke before I went back in and had my lunch and I always look around you know me and I saw something white, like light bulb white, the whole thing. And it wasn't flashing like an airplane, no red, no blue, no green, yellow, nothing. It was just bright white, like, like a light bulb white. And it didn't look round to me, it looked more more elongated. It came from the east and it was moving in a straight line to the west and it wasn't moving at a rapid speed. I had enough time where I ran back into my toolbox and I got my little you know, portable uh, recorder out, video recorder, my pocket recorder. Well, as it turns out, I didn't have enough zoom to capture this thing. But there was another guy out there, and he was getting into his car uh, to move his car around to the other side of the shop when, for when we got off, off of work. And I hollered at him, and I said, look at this, look, look at that. And he couldn't see it right off. And I kept pointing. He kept saying, where, where, where? And finally he got behind me, and where he could see my finger where I was at, pointing exactly at it. And he saw what I saw. And we didn't know what it was. It, it's not an airplane. It was high enough up where you couldn't hear it. You could tell it wasn't a helicopter. Uh, and then we just stood there, and I was trying to capture it, and I didn't know it wasn't going to capture it until I got home and put it in a computer, and it, it didn't show. I didn't have enough zoom as it, as it got farther away. It got smaller. Okay, so... He goes back to his car, and he's just sitting there for a couple of minutes before he moved it. I walked a little ways away, and it kind of freaked me out. And then I looked uh, up again, you know, I was looking around to see, see any more weird stuff. And then, same area from the east, here come this another one. It looked exactly like it moved the same pace of speed, moved the same straight line to the west, and I hollered at him again, and I said, look at it, here's another one. And he got out of his car, and, he, and he, he, I didn't even have to point at it this time. He looked over to the east, and he saw it. I said, this time, whenever we watched it, it got over to a certain point on the west, just like the other one did, and it was starting to fade out of view and look smaller. And then all of a sudden, it got 
I don't know what happened, actually. It got bigger. And it got brighter. Where you could see it better. And I still couldn't get it on my camera. And then it just faded out of view. So, I'm not sure what we saw. I haven't been able to find anything. I have a hard time believing it was, uh, you know, the Chinese uh, version of the ISS or whatever, and the ISS like flying in tandem, you know, behind one behind the other or something, you know. And then satellites, uh, well, I've never been privileged enough to see two satellites at the same time that flew in that same kind of a line, you know, where one was behind the other one like uh, two minutes behind it or something. So I don't know what, it, what they were, but I just want to let everybody know, um, if you know what they were, send me something and tell me what they were because I don't know what they were. And I'll holler at you all later. Try to beat the heat. See you soon. Bye bye.